Um, good day. I'm Shireen Rampasad, the program manager for successful application of technology centered around people. Thank you so much for listening to day one, uh, tracks seven and nine. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all our presenters for actually delivering such concise presentations. We had discussions and presentations from various SACCAP research partners, which included Wits University and their discussion on the community engagement and inclusivity model. We had CSIR, who actually presented on the guideline for inclusion of workers in equipment design and development. Uh, we had the Research Institution of Innovation and Sustainability, and Alex presented on the Skills 4.0 project. And we also had uh, the University of Pretoria Enterprises who presented on the jobs impact assessment. Um, and tomorrow, University of Pretoria will also be presenting on the skills project. Um, you would agree that the findings were very insightful. Um, I'm actually gonna open uh, up uh, the floor for some questions. Uh, so please use the chat box. However, I do have questions that, um, you know, I to actually pose um, to the uh, presenters today in terms of the programs and uh, possibly we could start with uh, Jody um, in terms of uh, the CSIR work that was done around the inclusion of employees in equipment design and development. Um, so Jody, uh, the core business of mining companies is healthy and safe production. So why should mining companies be concerned with worker inclusion in equipment design and development? Should this not be left to OEMs rather? Uh, so that's one of the questions, but Jody, I'd also like to um, pose another question to you, is that OEMs may lack capacity around uh, mining context, product specifications, um, OEMs may not necessarily be offering what mining companies need. Uh, is there a suggestion for OEMs capacity building in this regard? Um, I don't know whether you want to think about it or whether you'd like to answer immediately. Uh, Jody, thank you. Hi, Shireen. Thanks. Um, I'm happy to, to give a, a quick answer. And of course, um, this was a, a team effort. So if anyone in the in the team would also like to comment, um, I'd welcome that as well. Um, in terms of, of the, the aim of, of mining companies being, of course, it is on production and it is quite a, uh, it, it does make it difficult um, to be involved in equipment design and development if there's so many other demands. Um, but at the same time, if mining companies could be a bit more involved in the design of equipment, um, it could also then help, help them uh, in the long run um, in terms of knowing that um, they're getting the equipment that they want. It's designed uh, fit for purpose and for their particular operations and their a particular setting. Um, uh, I hope I hope that's touched on the first question at least. Uh, and then in terms of capacity, it, it, I think it is does seem like quite a difficult um, uh, consideration, uh, especially in the South African mining sector, when there could be yeah funding constraints um, that prevents OEMs from designing. Um, uh, equipment that might be needed in the future rather than just um, piece by piece um, um, and that limits also could limit uh, collaborations. Um, uh, and I've forgotten my train of thought. Um, um, but yeah, what I was going to say is also that it would help to have, have mining company input so that that they really are developing what mining companies need um, at the same time. Sorry for that, I was a bit distracted here. And um, I see a hand. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Sitsa. You may go ahead. Thank you very much, uh, <clears throat> Shireen, and thank you very much to the, uh, the colleagues, uh, the presenters. Um, I just have a question about the uh, 
the human-centered design, um, which seems like a very interesting uh, concept. Are there any sectors or countries that have managed to get this right, and um, you know that we can uh, that we can learn from? Um, because you point out the difficulties of it, um, and it'd just be useful if we can can learn from others in terms of how we actually approach that. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, Itza. I think I can maybe touch on that. Um, I, I don't think I can give you a full answer because I'm actually not not 100% aware. Um, but I think one sector that's often often mentioned as having a good good approach is is the automotive sector. Um, but further than that, I, I'm sorry, I don't think I'll be able to give you an appropriate response. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone else in the team would like to to comment further as well. Uh, so I think, uh, thanks, it's a, perhaps, uh, you know, it's an area that we actually need to investigate a little bit further. Um, I think Jody has kind of looked at, in terms of this study, uh, look potentially at, you know, the people-centered design, and there are some recommendations made around that. However, it would be wonderful to look at, uh, you know, potentially where this might be working. So thank you for that. Um, I think in terms of uh, another question, uh, that is important is that uh, maybe for the Reese team, Alex, um, we know that people resist change. Uh, so potentially, is there a practical approach that may be recommended or suggested in the, tr the transition to four point skills? That some minds have already started with this, but is there you know, some kind of uh, practical approach and suggestion for our minds? Thank you. Thank you so much, Shireen. I hope you can hear me. The internet was a bit uh, cutting off my side, uh, but I, uh, yes, I do think that from all of the research, what we found the most, and I think it speaks to what Jody was speaking about. It speaks to, I don't know uh, who of the colleagues who are in the call at the moment, uh, attended the discussion that took place with the Vets Mining Institute on the community side. I think the main component is around transparency and consultation early on. So that's where, for example, human centered design and the concept of, of consulting and bringing people into the conversation as early as possible becomes incredibly important. It demystifies a lot of the uh, assumptions and fears that might be around. Um, our understanding is from what we've spoken to uh, a number of the mining players in the country, uh, there's been a lot of work done in terms of um, really getting that side right, of engaging with the workforce and, and really getting everyone to participate and get a chance to, to ask questions and discuss and experience even. There were some nice examples from, um, I don't, I cannot recall exactly the mine right now, but they, um, they switch from a very, old traditional type of pneumatic drill to a new uh, handheld rock drill, which is a lot lighter uh, and it looks a lot more modern. There was a lot of resistance at first, um, but apparently the feedback that came a few weeks after a lot of the, the rock drill operators got a chance to, to learn how to use it was that they only wanted to use that one. So I think um, there is a few success stories. Let me pause there, Shireen, and hand back to you. Thank you. It's, uh, I think we really appreciate it. We hear uh, stakeholder engagement, we hear cooperation, we hear inclusion, uh, we hear taking the stakeholders along with us on this journey. So, so, you know, these are all excellent starting points. So thank you so much for those insights. Um, I don't see other questions. However, I also have another question uh, still coming along. Uh, and this is, uh, again, uh, for Vessel, uh, maybe from UP. Um, uh, maybe, um, what are some of the job preservation options for mines? Uh, and uh, what are job creation options outside mining for potentially um, the retrenched employees or post uh, mining employees? Thank you.
So I'm not sure if we've lost Vessel. Um, in terms of the state itself, I've actually noted uh, that Vessel has indicated that in terms of job creation options outside mining, there were various other sectors that we looked into, for example, construction, renewable energy, uh, distribution, manufacturing, etc. And I think importantly, what we would need to actually think about is that how would we reskill the mining workforce uh, to be a, to enable and provide the skills that are required uh, for displaced mine employees. So it's just a consideration. I'm not sure Vessel is with us to make any comments in that regard. Um, thanks for that. And then I think just as a last question um, is in terms of the um, the question or the community inclusivity uh, project team. I'm not sure if Ingrid is still with us. It's just in terms of that project. Thank you for the insights there. If there are three key takeaways from that project, what would it be uh, for, for the uh, mining operations? Thank you. Hi, Shereen. Yes, I am still here. Um, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Um, Shereen, I think the, the, the big issues have really been highlighted by, by Nancy and, and Safiso, and I think they talk to that issue firstly of impact and benefits and having a more integrated approach to managing an in, impact and benefits that these aren't two, from a community perspective, two different components of, of the mine the community's relationship with mining. And then that obviously requires a number of sort of shifts within, within industry. Um, the, the big issue of, of transparency, of um, communication and open and, and sharing amongst things, for example, like the, the SLP, monitoring information, um, that that there needs to be even even the risks and the benefits there needs to be it needs to be open so that there is awareness and and that to some extent will address the issue the issue of, of corruption and i think also just an improved engagement practice we found you know the focus of the research was around engagement for modernization but we actually found from the research that engagement generally was problematic across the mining companies so i think there's a big focus on on how engagement with communities can be improved and recognizing obviously that that is from both the community side and the mine side and that there's a role for government to play in that a very important role for government to play in that communities felt that government was largely absent from those engagements so sorry that's a very three top headline issues in in two minutes thank you so Ingrid, for those that special that you are with us, are there any final comments that you have to make from the project side? Because we've come to the end of our time. Uh, so I don't see anything coming through from Vessel. So I'd like to say once again, thank you to all our presenters and the audience. Thank you for choosing to participate in, in the SACCAP tracks. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, send them through to the presenters or myself or SAIMM, and we're happy to engage further. We hope to hear from you soon. Thank you and take care and goodbye from the SACCAP team. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.